Well, hey, book world. I am so excited to see you tonight for episode three of RTTV. During our premiere week, I am so thrilled to see all of you. Now, have you ever wanted to bring your book into your fans' world, even if it's not physically in front of them, but to bring it into their world as a part of the things that they're seeing in their daily life so that they always have you at the forefront of their mind? I know that can be really hard, especially if you're not really super great at your marketing or at creating images that help with that, but that's what tonight is all about. This is one of my all-time favorite lessons to teach my fans, my students, my clients, my friends. I love this because it is so effective at taking your book and putting it into the world of your fans so that it's always the forefront of their minds so that they're always thinking about it so that they even when they don't have it are thinking oh yes I need to get that book I really want to read that book and these simple things are going to trigger these thoughts based solely on the image that you can create from your own home with things that you already mm -hmm. own in a simple and easy way this is so easy that you can do it with your iPhone I'm gonna be teaching you tonight professional photography tips on how to make this image, this type of marketing image, so that you can get the same results that I get, that my fans get, that my clients and students and friends are getting by using these images. In fact, and I know I say this a lot, but this is important. I have had people, fans of mine, come to me and flat out say, I purchased this book because of an image you created and put on your Instagram. Now, if I have that kind of power, so do you. And you can do so much more than I can do because I am not the author of the book. You are. You can add more than I can. And you can represent other authors the same way. So we're talking tonight about Deskscape images and it's going to be absolutely incredible for your marketing, whether you are marketing your book, your friend's books, or you are bringing it all together as part of your brand and doing incredible things with these Deskscape images. So I'm super excited to see you. I see that some of you have found our chat box. Um, hello, Lissa. I see we've got a couple of people from California, Oregon. Oh, I'm glad to see you guys. I'm from Pennsylvania, so hello from the East Coast. Glad that you're all here with us tonight. We are jumping in to episode three on Deskscape Images during our premiere week. So let's get started. Welcome to RTTV, brought to you by Reading Transforms, with your host, K.M. Robinson of K.M. Robinson Photography and Reading Transforms. If you look to the right of your screen, you will note a chat box. We encourage you to ask questions and comment throughout the show. Our moderators will be watching the feed and collecting questions for our hosts to answer during the end of the broadcast. Use the red question mark tab to differentiate your questions from your comments in the feed. If you are a member of our Facebook community and our weekly newsletter, your notes will be emailed to you shortly. Make sure that you are active this week in our Facebook community for deeper insights into how to apply this into your marketing strategy and for ongoing support. Welcome to the weekly live broadcast that will revolutionize your author branding, book marketing, and social media marketing strategies. So tonight we are talking about one of my favorite things. I recommend this to all of my students and clients and author friends to use within their marketing because it is such an essential piece of a marketing strategy and it's so often overlooked. So here's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. It's something called a deskscape image or a desktop image. And these images are pictures shot straight down on a table or uh, a desktop. Usually they're either a high white key background, a black background, or a wooden toned background. Um, and it's your book with desk things on it. So maybe you've got a keyboard, maybe you've got a stapler, maybe you've got scissors and paper clips, maybe you have a notebook. Maybe you have your full computer on there or a lamp or plants, but it's a desk scape image. So it looks like it's sitting on a desk. Now, I bet you're wondering why on earth this is so important. Why would anybody go and stick their book on a desk and then use that to promote their book and their brand? At first glance, it doesn't seem like it would be that effective, but you have to think about it in the right context. So when I am talking to my clients, when I'm talking to my students, when I'm talking to my friends, 
I have to let them know why this is so important. We're gonna talk about why it's important in just a second. But first, let me tell you about one of my friends. I had one of my author friends come to me and ask me to create a series of images for her to purchase as marketing graphics. And so I sat down with her book, I took a whole bunch of pictures, she went through the gallery and she decided which ones she wanted. She really didn't buy very many Deskscape images at first. She bought, I think, maybe one or two from the collection. And then she moved on toward other images that were more related to the content of her book. About a couple of days later, maybe a week later, she actually read my article on Deskscape images and she learned the benefits of it. And when she did, she came back to me and she bought a whole bunch of Deskscape images because she knew the value of these images within her marketing strategy. She now uses those within her marketing strategy and has seen great success from it. Now, I personally have seen wonderful success from these images, and I will tell you right now, I've had fans, book readers and non-book readers alike, look at these images and think, because this image is so beautiful, because it's so wonderful, because of the reason I'm going to tell you about in a minute, they want to buy this book. So I've had people come to me and specifically say, I purchased this book because of the image you put on Instagram. So why are Deskscape images so important to your marketing strategy and why are they so effective? Well, let me tell you, Deskscape images are so important because it takes your book and puts it into a real world situation where your fans can imagine it in their life. Everybody has a desk, everybody has a table, not everybody has a fantasy world. So if you are decorating your images based off of the content of the cover, the content of the story, that's great. That draws them in and makes them ask questions. Why is this related to the book? I should read the book and find out. With Deskscape Images, it takes the book and it puts it directly into their everyday world. Everybody runs across desks. Everybody runs across tabletops. And if they see a book in a real life setting that is like their own, it's going to click. I could have this in my own setting like this. I could have this exactly in my home as it is here. I could put this on my desk. It could be near my computer. It could be on my nightstand. It could be on my table. This is a real world, world situation where they can picture this in their own life and that makes them want to have it. So anytime they think of a desk, anytime they run into a desk, any well not run into a desk, but they see a desk, they're going to remember that picture of your book and think, oh yeah, I have to go buy that book. Oh yeah, I wanted to read that. That's right, I wanted to see that. That reminded me of it. So Deskscape images are essential because it takes your book and puts it into their hands. It may not physically be in their hands at the moment, but they can picture it there. And that is why it is so important. So now that you know the logic behind this, now that you know why it is so essential, what are we gonna do about it? Well, I teach my clients, I teach my students how to do this for themselves. And I have a series of videos on YouTube that you can check out that will help you learn how to photograph and how to stylize books. So we talk about things like photographing on gray days when you don't have a lot of light. So shooting in dark and limited lighting. We talk about how to avoid glare on shiny books. We talk about how to pick the right backgrounds and how to pick the right uh, objects to style it with, that you need certain finishes and you want to avoid certain things and things work out better than the others and how to arrange things. We talk about all of these things within the YouTube channel. And I'm going to touch a little bit on that today just so you have a very basic idea of things. Um, but you definitely want to check out that YouTube channel. So I will be dropping that link at the end in the chat box so that you can kind of check that out later on. But I want to talk for a few minutes about how you can create your own Deskscape images. Now, sorry. <laughs> now, here's what you need to remember. I am a professional photographer. I've been doing this for the last eight years of my life. So I've had a lot of practice. I know how to shoot product photography. And although I'm a fine arts photographer, I have been trained to do product photography. And over the last about year and a half, I've been very in touch with product photography through my work with Reading Transforms. So I'm going to give you some professional tips that you can implement into your imagery and shooting your imagery that will help your images 
look better and more high end as you are doing this for your own marketing. Now, everything I'm teaching you here today is applicable to iPhone photography. You do not have to have a high end camera like mine. Mine is a very high end, best in the industry type of camera, but I don't always use that for my book photography. I can do the same things through my iPhone if I chose to, or when I'm teaching how to do it through an iPhone. And the techniques and the uh, accessories that I'm gonna be talking about today, you can do on your own for very cheap. So stick with me, don't think that this is talking directly to photographers because it's not, it's talking to you. My fans have used it, my students have used it, my friends have used it, everybody can do this and you can do this too. So deskscape images, here's what we need to know. The first thing we need for a deskscape image is a desk. Now, some of you are looking at me saying, but I don't have a good desk. My desk is not pretty. It's ugly and it's covered stuff. What do I do? It's okay. Because if you look at my images, you're going to see I use a lot of white backgrounds and a lot of black backgrounds and sometimes wooden backgrounds as well, but mostly I stick with my white background and my black background, and they are not real desks. That is a total and complete fake out. In fact, it is made out of poster board. So if you go to a dollar store or to somewhere like Walmart, you can get that uh, foam board, which is just a little bit thicker than poster board, and it's flat, and it's white, and it's black, and you wanna stick to colors that would actually be a desk. So don't go getting the blue foam board. You don't want that. You want to stick with the white and you want to stick with the black. And then you want to use uh, wooden tones. So if you can get a palette or if you can use a table, that's awesome. I'm going to focus on the white and black today. So you're going to get your foam board and you're going to set it down on a table. doesn't matter what the table looks like because it's covered up. So you can set it down on your table and you're going to be shooting straight down. So what you want to do is put it by a window. So right now I'm sitting in front of a giant picture window here. This is where I'm recording. And this is actually where I shoot my images, right here. And so I put a table down in front of my window. You can use a window, you can use a door, you can go outside if you need to. The point is to use natural lighting. If you use artificial light, it's going to tint your photos a weird color if it's a yellow toned light. If you cannot use natural light, if you really need to use artificial light, use a white toned light because that will not give you that awful yellow tone to it. So put your board in front of your window and you're going to be shooting straight down. Now the first thing you need to do is set your book down. So you take your book and you put it in the middle of your phone board or your table or wherever you're shooting and you're going to arrange everything around it. Now the key here is to build up this blank space into a desk. So what kind of things do we need for a desk? Well, let's think about it. If you sit down at a desk, what kind of things would you normally see? Maybe there would be a lamp. Maybe you'd have some plants. You'll probably have some pens and pencils. Uh, maybe a tape dispenser, a stapler. Uh, I like to use paper clips and uh, little binder clips and things like that. Sometimes you'll have a notebook out there. You can have all sorts of interesting things within this desk. I even use decorative plates. Now, Here's the thing, when you are doing this, your desk is not necessarily going to be a functional desk. So if you sit down at a desk in your home and it's a functional desk, it's probably a little boring. Um, you have things in a functional way and it's not super pretty. But we're gonna bring in decorative elements to make this a little more high end because it's an image, it's not a functional desk. So I pull in plates. A lot of the time I will go to the stores or when I'm out and I find a little decorative plate, I will get it as long as it's not super bright and obnoxious. So you'll notice I have some solid colors, I have some patterns, I've got different things that I can pull in to work with my different color schemes. I place those on my desk and then I use those little things like paper clips, like the binder clips, like other things that might be found on a desk. Now, we need to talk a little bit about arranging these objects. Once you have found your objects, you need to place them on the desk in a way that makes sense. It has to be logical. So if you were going to sit down at this desk in front of you here, where would things be? Well, my keyboard is probably going to be a little bit closer 
to the top of my screen and my book is going to be between me and that keyboard in most cases. I'm not going to put a coffee mug way over here if this is my dominant hand. And I'm not gonna put scissors where they could poke me in the wrist. I'm not going to put my paper clips way close to the edge that I could knock it off when I'm doing things. You have to be logical and intentional about where you're putting things. So my lamp is going to be toward the top of my image. My plants are going to be toward the top of my image. My phone would probably be toward the bottom of my image, closer to the edge of my table. My earbuds would probably be closer to the edge of my table where I could get easy access to them. I don't want them far away because I want them within reach. And I also don't want to put things that I could potentially knock off if I sat down at this table to on the edge. I would want them further away. So you have to keep in mind where things would be. And you want to put them in a directional location so that it makes sense. So your scissors are not going to be one particular way. Your pens are not going to be way over far away from where you would write. If you have a notebook, you want your pen near it, not on the other side. You have to be logical about where you're putting things. Now, as you are designing your deskscape image, you need to be intentional. I keep using this word intentional because you have to plan it out and it has to make sense. Remember, we're not making a functional desk. We're making a high-end marketing desk. So as you are setting things out, you're going to wanna to go with a specific theme. You do not wanna have all sorts of random things just tossed onto this desk. That's not going to look stylized and it's not going to look like good marketing. It's going to look like you just tossed a bunch of stuff on your desk and snapped a picture. So if your book has green tones in it, it's got some greens and blacks and mint colors, maybe you're going to want to go with more of a mint scheme. So you can use mint colored uh, paper clips on a mint and white colored tray. You can work in the mint colored scissors and then you can have some other accents. Perhaps your book has a golden title on it. I love working with gold on white background. So I would pull in my gold scissors, my gold paper clips, my golden rimmed bowl. I would pull in my gold stapler. I would pull in my gold binder clips. I would pull in anything gold. And I would put that there to highlight that cover, the title on that cover and make that stand out. Now, you have to pick a scheme. Maybe it's based on a color, maybe it's based on a particular style. So maybe you want girly and floral, maybe you want an organic natural look. So you use a keyboard and a couple of succulents and you use natural colored woods within your image to make that book cover pop. Whatever you do, you need to make sure that you are keeping this within the same style. You don't want to have a mishmash of things because it's going to be confusing in the image. And remember, when you are designing these images, your cover needs to be the focus of your image. So if you are taking an image and your eyes are looking all over at all the random colors and the things that you have on this desk, before you look at that book, before you focus on that book, then you need to scale back. You do not want anything to overpower this book. Now, as you are designing this, it is okay to have things overlapping. I love overlapping things. If you notice in my imagery on my Instagram page, so if you jump onto my Instagram page when we're done here at Reading Transforms, you are gonna scroll through and you're gonna see a whole lot of things overlapping. So oftentimes I'll put a book down on the table and then I will sprinkle some um, paper clips on the tray, a little bit on my desk, my thick desk, and then a couple on the book. And I will put things on top of each other to add visual interest. This is a good thing. But when you're doing this, you do not want to cover up any important information about the book. So don't cover the title and don't cover the author's name. I would assume that's you, but perhaps you are um, promoting a friend's book or you're comparing your book to your friend's book saying, if you like my book, you'll also like my best friend's book. You should check that out. 
you don't want to cover that up because when people see your images, especially if they're scrolling through Instagram or Twitter and they see your images and stop for just a second to see what prettiness is on their screen, you want them to be able to very easily tell what the book is, what the title is, who the author is, so that if they're interested, they can then jump onto Amazon or wherever and buy your book, or at least look it up more. You want to make sure that your book is the focus of your image. So as you are designing this type of imagery, your goal is to make it look desk-like. This can be really easy and this can be really hard. So I would suggest to you that you start out simple. So find your book, put it in the center of your whatever background you have, whatever flat background. Do not use fabric for this. That's my pro tip for you. Don't use fabric for this because you can see the lines in fabric and they know it's not a desk scape. Then it's just going to look awkward. So use something flat. I would recommend poster board or foam board. Sometimes foam board doesn't want to cooperate all the time. So if you want to get that foam board to stabilize it and then put a white poster board on top of it, just use the non-shiny side. You don't want anything shiny. Um, but once you have everything on there, then you're going to start pulling in elements. So decide what theme you want to go with. What do you want to run with for your book? Are you going to use a keyboard? That's big. Put your big things down first. So put your keyboard down and then build around it. What else can you add? Your bowl of paper clips, some binder clips. Can you add some thumbtacks? How about a pen? What about a notebook? Do you want scissors, a stapler, tape dispenser? Do you want some succulents? Do you want a lamp? Now that's a lot of stuff right there. You don't want to put everything into one image. That's going to be overwhelming. So build and layer. Start with your big things. Then look and see where it looks blank, where, where it's missing things. What would logically fit there? What's going to look good there? Take your time and arrange your objects. Test it with your phone. Hold your phone up or your camera up and take a test picture. Does it look crowded? Does it work? Does it need more? Does it need less? Take things away. Add things in. Move things around. Do you need to add a different angle? Go ahead. This is digital photography, guys. This is not like we're wasting film here. Try until you're happy. Now, remember, as you are taking these images, if you were with us when we did our episode on cultivating and curating your signature style for your Instagram feed, we mentioned that you want to leave some space on your image to put your writing. So maybe you're putting the link to your website. Maybe you're putting the link to your uh, Instagram and Twitter pages. Perhaps you're putting your Facebook link. Maybe you're talking about the 99 cent sale going on for your book right now. Maybe you are putting a quote on it. Just leave a little space on your desk so that you can write things or put your logo. Um, don't overwhelm your image. As you are putting your things on your table, make sure that you are arranging them in a way that makes sense logically if you were to actively sit down at this desk and work on it. You want to make sure that you are doing the best you can to market your book through your image. So we need to talk just real quick. We're going to touch on a couple of those things I mentioned within our YouTube channel. So. As you are photographing this book, if you are working in dark and limited lighting, you're going to need to bounce some light. Because you already have that foam board, you are in luck. You can make yourself a reflector. So as a professional photographer, I have professional grade reflectors that I work with. They are called 5-in-1 reflectors. They have a silver side, a gold side, a white side, a black side, and a diffuser in the middle. Complicated, but really cool. And also really big. Now, I use this to bounce light onto my subject space. So if, if I'm in a place where I have shadows like this, do you see the shadow? I've just blocked my light. But if I move my hand, that light is bounced back on. Right now I'm sitting in front of a picture window and my house is acting as a natural reflector. It is siding right over there. It's a light blue color and it is bouncing that light back on my face. The sun is over there. It shouldn't be illuminating the side of my face. But because it's being bounced, it's illuminating the side of my face. Now, you can bounce light easily for like a dollar. If you have this foam board, you can bounce light. Because what's going to happen is the light will come in, hit off of it, and bounce back on your subject. 
So you can use foam board, you can use a roll of paper towels, you can use computer paper. Whatever you need to do, hold up that white and bounce the light back so that you get this lighting just like I'm getting right now. You can do that for a dollar. If you get foam board, prop it up, you're good to go. If you get two pieces of foam board and you pin it together at the corner, you have a reflector that stands up on its own. Check out the YouTube channel for more information on that. I actually go through the whole process of showing you how to create your reflector if you're not just using one panel, okay? It's gonna be awesome. So definitely check that out, it's gonna help you. When you're picking your objects, and this is super important, please listen to this. When you are picking your objects, you have to make sure that you are getting matte finish, not metallic. So if you have some kind of metallic object, you want a matte finish gold, not a shiny gold. Because when you go to take your picture and it's shiny, you will be reflected in it and then they will see your reflection. So I actually have on the YouTube channel um, an episode where I talked about matte versus metallic finish and I hold up ornaments and I show you a matte finished gold ornament and a shiny gold ornament and you can see how my camera did not reflect this one that was matte finish, but I was definitely in the shiny finish. So you have to be careful of what you're doing. You wanna make sure things are photographing well. So matte finish over shiny finish. And then of course, you wanna make sure things look good. Sometimes you just have to test it. So make sure those scissors look okay. Make sure that the paper clips look okay. Make sure that your stapler looks okay. I'm gonna be real honest with you. I went out one day and I bought myself some pink stuff. I found some pink paper clips and uh, I think some binder clips and some other decorative elements. And I bought myself uh, a pink stapler and tape dispenser and I went to photograph it and I thought it was gonna be really awesome, and it didn't photograph well. It was a matte finish, it wasn't shiny, but it photographed as this obnoxious red color because I hadn't adjusted any of my settings on my camera. I was just making a point, snapping some pictures for, for some of the educational stuff that I do, and it did not look nice. So sometimes you just have to try things. Now that I'm aware, I can fix my settings as I'm using that, but if I were just taking a photo with my iPhone, it might not photograph so well. So you have to make sure that you're testing things and checking to make sure that it works. And if it doesn't, take it out. Do not waste your time with it. Put something else in. You can make it look good and you can make it look right, but you gotta focus on your image. Now, I said this when we did our Instagram lesson. I'm going to say it again. The most important thing you can do is take your shot. Yes, you need it to look good. Yes, you need it lit well. Yes, you need to make sure that you have space to be writing, but the main goal is to take this photo and take it out because what happens if it's blurry? You gotta fix it if it's blurry. So you want to make sure that you are testing this, you are looking at your images, and before you break down our setup, make sure that you are definitely checking with that and that you know how it looks, you know that it's not blurred, that everything makes sense, and that it looks good in your image. And I'm also gonna to recommend to you that you try several different layouts. So don't just set up your book, snap a picture, and say, I'm done. Don't just check it once and say, oh, it's not blurred, the lighting's fine, I'm gonna run with this one. Use a couple different layouts. So rearrange things, change things. You might end up liking something better, or, because you already had that set up and you took those images, you now have several images that you can use that are slightly different. And you did it all at the same time, so you're not wasting time setting things up and tearing things down again. You want to make sure that you know that you have good images that you can pull out when you need to. So the more you work on this, the better you're going to be with it. And then your goal is going to be to get this posted. And when you do, you have to use within your content, within the comments that you're posting, you have to make sure that you are reminding them to think of your book in their setting. Now, you're not going to come right out and say, every time you think of a desk, think of my book. It's not what you want. 
you want them to be able to do that on their own, but you kind of have to guide them. So talk about how beautiful it looks with the computer setting, with the keyboard, and with those beautiful paper clips and the scissors. Talk about what you're seeing visually. If you can paint them a story, if you can paint that mental image like you do in your writing. If you can make your audience see that in their mind, the same way that they're seeing it on their phone as they're scrolling through your Instagram feed or your Twitter feed or your Facebook feed, they're going to remember it. Connect it for them in a way that is not in their face, but will make them remember it. Now, there's some awesome ways to do that, but try. Try your hand at it. See what you can come up with. Make sure that you are focusing on keeping the book the main part of your content. Um, I do have some good news for you. I always try to give a freebie when we do these fantastic episodes of RTTV. Um, it doesn't happen every single time, but for the most part, it's going to happen for many, many of our episodes. And I have one for you today. You are going to be able to download for free a checklist for picking your props for your Deathscape images. So this is a checklist to go through and make sure everything makes sense, it fits, it's going to photograph well, and it's going to look nice. That way, every time you go to take your own deskscape images, you can check off as you go to make sure everything is just the way it needs to be, and it actually works within your image. And of course, remember, I am a professional photographer. Your images aren't going to be as good as mine when you just start out. You will get better at it. You will advance the more you practice. I'm telling you right now, my first attempt at product photography way back when I started all eight years ago was probably not so pretty. I mean, I had some good ideas. It just didn't necessarily work out all of the time. But you will get better at it. I am at the point where I can set things down and knock out images and I'm done. I know exactly what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. I get it done in a few minutes and I can move on with my life. You will get there too. Just practice and try. Now, as you're doing this, I want you to be posting these to Instagram, to your Facebook, to your Twitter, and I want you to tag me in them. Or at the very least, send me a link because I want to see what you're working on. I want to see how you are doing this. So please always feel free to tag me. I will drop my uh, Twitter handle and my Instagram handle in the chat box for you, or the moderators will, so that you can see that. Um, and then and then you can share with me what you're doing. I love to get on and see what you're working on. I love supporting you guys. If I can comment, if I can favorite, if I can like, I am happy to do that for you because we know that engagement and interaction ranks us higher within the algorithms on these social media platforms and it's only going to help you if you can get people to interact. And I am happy to be there for you if I possibly can. Now I know it's going to get to the point where I can't do it for everybody for every single time. I'm going to miss things. And if I do, I'm sorry, but I am trying. I promise that I will do the best that I can do to make sure that I'm not missing anything and I'm getting everything that you guys are doing. All right. So here's the deal. If you have questions, now is the time. Let's talk about how you are going to be doing this. Do you have questions about how you are photographing these? Do you have questions about how you are setting these up? Do you have questions about the particular things that you should be using within these images? Ask me now. Jump over to the chat box and leave me a question. When you go over to the chat box, there's a question mark. Make sure that you click that. That'll let me know that you are asking a question and it will stand out from the other comments when people are chatting. So let's jump over to my chat box and see what we have got. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions. Let's see what we've got. What are your favorite desk items to use? Oh, okay, this is a good question. Um, I, I love this type of imagery. This is one of my favorite things. If you actually look at my website, you know, you've seen my website. It's all this deskscape imagery. All of my branding is within this. So I am a big fan of using different desk items within my images. And I personally really like my gold tones. So I, I pull my gold scissors. Um, scissors are a big thing for me. I love getting scissors involved into my images, especially decorative ones. The, the plain ones are fine, but I have, a, I have a set of Eiffel Tower and Big Ben and I think two crane 
scissors that I love putting into my images. I love using my gold stapler. I love, especially love using trays. So if I take the little trays and I put some flowers in it or I put some paper clips or binder clips in it, that makes me really happy. So if you go through my images, my favorite things are definitely my scissors and my little plate trays. Um, and, I, and I like things like paper clips and binder clips because it really adds to that desk look. If you go through my images, you'll also see a lot of times I use a keyboard. Um, the keyboard that I'm using is actually one I had for my super old iPad. Um, and it's a wirelessly connected thing, so it's not actually attached to my computer. Um, on occasion, I actually take my laptop and I will put that down and I will photograph that. But it tends to be a lot of work for me to unhook all of my external hard drives from my computer. So my computer tends to stay put and I just use my wireless keyboard that I use, used to use with my iPad. I don't really use that anymore, but now it's, it's a prop, so it's all good. So I would go with things like scissors and the trays and paper clips and binders. Um, and staplers and things like that. So those those are my top ones. But you can totally do like tape dispensers and, and all that fun stuff. Um, so and definitely make sure you check out our blog post on this because that will have some great ideas for you too. And our, in our newsletter, we will be sending out some ideas for that as well. Should colors match books or your brand? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say to this. If you are doing it to take pictures of books, whether they're yours or someone else's, I would typically recommend that you go with your brand. I know that I, I mean, in my images, yes, I use the colors in the books, but I'm teaching that. If I were doing this to go with my curated feed of my Instagram, I would definitely go with colors that match my brand. Now, I want things that complement the covers, so if it's like a very gold-based cover and all of my stuff was silver, maybe I would try to work some other things in or maybe I would maybe stay away from some of the silver things. Um, but you, you definitely want to stick within your brand. So as long as it looks cohesive with the rest of your brand, you're fine. If you can kind of pull in things from the book, that's cool too. So let's say my branding was that gold-based imagery with the white background. I would have my white background and then the book and then let's pretend it was maybe a green cover, like a mint cover. I would use a lot of my gold accents, but I might sprinkle in some of my mint accents mixed with it so that it kind of pulls it together. So for that, let's pretend I had the book. I put that down. I have a bunch of my gold things like my scissors, like my uh, stapler, like my um, paper clips. But I might put that on a mint colored plate or a tray to bring in the colors from the cover, but also have my own personal branding in it. So I would probably say stick with your branding, and then if you can work in elements of the cover, that'd be awesome. But you also don't want to make it look weird if it really, really, really clashes with the cover. So think things through. Try different things out. See what looks best. Photograph it with different things, and then pick the best one from that, whether it's your book or whether you are promoting a friend's book, or you're saying, if you like my book, you'll also like this, or I'm currently reading this, make sure you are working it all in within your brand. Because remember, it's all about getting that curated feed. We talked about this in episode one, where we were talking about signature style for your Instagram page. This applies to your Twitter. This applies to your Facebook. This applies to your blog. This applies to your website. When you're doing this, you want to stay within your signature style that should be carried out throughout all of your online presence. So make sure you work with that. That's very important. So as you are doing this, as you are going through this, always keep in mind it needs to be within your signature style. It needs to go with your branding. As you are doing this, try different things. It's okay because this is digital photography. This is not something that it's one and done or you'll waste film because we, we don't have film, we've got digital now. So it's okay to try different things. It's okay to try multiple ways of positioning things. You can move things around on your deskscape. You can try different backgrounds. You can take it with your phone. You can take it with your camera, see what you like better. You can take it in front of different windows or doors. You can bounce light. You just have to try and see what's going to work best. If you don't like it, guess what? You don't have to use it. That's okay. It's okay if you don't use a shot. There are certain shots I take that I don't use. You don't have to either. Work at it until you are happy with it, and that's going to make the difference. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip here. 
one of the best things you can do is to work on the words that you put with these images. So it's not enough just to take that picture and pop it on to your whatever social media feed. You gotta remind them why it's important. Why is it important that it's on a desk? Because it's like their desk. Ask them, would you like this on your desk? How would this look on your desk? Tell me how you would style this on your desk. Bring in those thoughts to make them think and connect those things and you will be good to go. So now is your time to try this out. This week, I want you to go ahead, grab your scissors and your stapler and your paper clips and your pretty trays and, and your different desk items. Try out some deskscape images. Try it with your book. Try it with your friend's books. Try it with more than one book of the picture. That's okay too. Remember I keep bringing up, if you like my book, you will also like this book. Put them together. Put them on a desk. It'll look good. You want to make sure that you are doing everything possible to make that click for them. So give them multiple opportunities. And then keep it within your styling. So maybe one day as you're taking your deskscape images, you want to focus on this particular area and you've got your keyboard and your scissors and your paperclip. And the next day, you carry over some of those items, but add in a couple more. You can rotate through your items so that the desk looks slightly different each time, or you could just use different items. So perhaps I have created an image with a full deskscape and it's got my keyboard and my scissors and my stapler and my tape dispenser and my book and my paper clips and my binder clips and whatever. And then a couple days later, I'm going to photograph it again, but this time it's just going to be the books and the paper clips. It ties it all together, but it's not a full deskscape. That's okay. It doesn't have to be a full deskscape. You don't need the keyboard and the scissors and the tape dispenser and the everything else. You can use bits and pieces. It could be like a zoomed in shot of a desk. Maybe your computer screen is out of the focus of the picture. Maybe your scissors are off to the side and you can't see it because it wasn't in that picture. It's okay to use bits and pieces and move things around and it's okay to reuse items. I reuse my items all the time. So take advantage of your time this week and really make an effort to jump in there and get those really great shots that you can then work into your marketing and your branding and remind your fans that they can have this in their own world too. Simple as that. So I can't wait to see what you are working on this week. This is going to be so exciting for me. Make sure you are tagging us in there, um, whether we are on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, we want to see what you're working on. If you're a little nervous about this, you want to test the waters a little bit, try Instagram stories. Those will only last for 24 hours. And then take that picture and put it in your feed and see how people respond to it. I promise it's going to be awesome. I've never had a situation where people have not loved deskscape images. When you put those onto your social media feeds, people respond really, really well to them. They love them. So this week, this is your job. Make some really awesome deskscape images and share them with me because we want to cheer you on. So tag us, tag us in a comment, drop us a link, show us. Show me so I can be your cheerleader. I cannot wait to see what you are doing. So thank you so much for joining me. I have loved hanging out with you tonight. This has been fabulous. I'm K.M. Robinson of K.M. Robinson Photography and Reading Transforms. And I've got just a few things I want you to remember before you go because, you know, I like to let you you know, think about a couple things right before you leave, things that are important, so make sure you are checking these out. Again, this is premiere week, so I'm so excited that we are on day three of five, two more days in premiere week before we move to our regular scheduled Saturday nights, and this is going to be awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Check out these last couple of things. Hey, authors. I know that marketing your book can be so confusing, especially when you don't have a big budget to work with, but I want you to know that there are ways that you can market your book without costing you a cent. I have come up with a list of 20 totally cost-free marketing ideas that you can implement into your marketing strategy and see the same great results that my own authors have seen when they implemented it into their marketing plan. You can get your very own totally free copy of how to market your book creatively and effectively even when you're flat broke if you jump on to www.readingtransforms.com up near the top you're going to see a spot where you can download it completely for free it is my gift to you i hope that you take this pdf and you use it in your marketing strategy and see incredible results and i can't wait to see what you do with it i'm cam robinson of cam robinson photography and reading transforms stay inspired do you have a new book releasing soon 
Do you want to create a unique experience for your fans on your book release day? Do you want to interact with your fans, celebrate your book, and be the talk of the industry? Book launch live events bring all this and more right into your grasp. Rita Award winner and New York Times bestselling author Pin Tip Dunn called it the highlight of my release day. Dying to find out if this is for you? Visit booklaunchlive.readingtransforms.com for more info and see if this is the perfect thing for your release day. Do you ever feel like you're alone in the book world? When the conferences die down and you're sitting in front of your computer alone writing your next manuscript, things can seem very isolated. But they don't have to be. Do you ever feel like social media changes are getting the better of you? Do you feel like you need support that you just don't have? You don't have to be on your own trying to solve the algorithms. Join the Reading Transforms community for a group of authors and book world professionals going through the same things as you. Connect and support one another. Hear from industry leaders on technology changes and get the latest updates on RTTV, the weekly live broadcast that teaches you to market your books and brand yourself more efficiently and creatively. Get the community and support that you've been longing for and surround yourself with authors just like you. We'll see you there.